Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you are a first time viewer, a new viewer, please go down and click subscribe down there. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, if we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That's our promise to you. So what we're talking about tonight, yes, you see this in my hand. This is the standard UDM. And what we're going to be using this for is we are going to explain unify firewall rules, the default firewall rules. Now I'm only doing firewall rules. I'll reiterate that again when we get to the computer, but I'm only doing firewall rules and we're going to talk about the firewall rules that come on here, how to work with them. And I'm going to give you some examples. And that is, that's all we're going to do. We're not going into any of the other options. So if that's what you're looking for, you can go ahead and tune out now. Just giving you a heads up. That's going to be, we're going to explain the firewall rules. So let's head on over to the computer and get to it. All right. So here we are over at our UDM and it says everything is great. I think that should say everything is awesome, but, uh, We'll see how it goes. So what we're going to be using as a client device to run our test on is this uh, Mikrotik AP that you've seen me uh, have around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you that you can ping this right now. And we'll do this occasionally as a sanity check. So let's go check out the firewall rules. Like I said, we are only dealing with the firewall rules. So let me explain a little bit about the firewall rules. You've seen an edge router video, and these are based off of the same logic as the edge router video that I did. So you've got three different types of interfaces. You've got WAN, LAN, and guest. Now, what you need to remember is that if you have multiple guest networks, they're all handled, all the rules for those will be handled under guest. If you have multiple LAN uh, or regular VLANs that are not tagged as guest, those are also going to be handled under LAN. And then while I, I only recommend that you use one WAN and try to use the firewall rules um, with one WAN. But let's talk about, remember, our directions. So whether it's WAN, LAN, or guest, in are packets coming into the interface, which is where we generally want to block things. Out are packets going out of the interface. And then local is reserved for things actually running on the firewall. So for WAN, it would be things like SSHing in from the outside. It would be uh, the web interface from the outside. For LAN uh, local, it would be things like the DHCP server, DNS. And for guest, there's probably not going to be anything running, although uh, guest is probably going to get DHCP and also could get that DNS. So you need to remember the directions, and you need to remember that when we create these networks that it does not create more sets of firewall rules. You have to work within these, these guidelines. And I'm going to show you that. So the first thing that we're going to do real quick is what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, make sure we can still ping 192.168.2.39. We're good there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to network and we're going to create a network. Now, Forget anything else on here besides guest and corporate while we're dealing with the firewall rules. So what a corporate network is, is a LAN or a VLAN. But when you're talking about the firewall rules, it is going to be a LAN. And by default, there are no blocked communications between VLANs. And we'll show you this here in just a second. So we're going to call this IoT. We're going to make it VLAN 22. And we're going to make the subnet. 192, 168, and we're just going to do a class C because I'm feeling lazy tonight, and it's a corporate, which means it's treated as just a regular network. So we're going to go ahead and save that, and what we're going to do is we're going to come back out here to the device. The device should be provisioned already, so if we can ping that interface, and we can, that's perfect. So remember, we've still got 2.39, which is our Mikrotik AP. So we're going to come over here to the Dream Machine, and this is plugged into port 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this, and we're going to call this IoT Micro Tick, 
and I'm going to change this to IoT. Now what's going to happen is that the MikroTIG is going to get a new IP address on that 192.168.22 network. Now, I will probably have to reboot it here real quick for that to happen. So if you can hang with me, that is what I'm doing right now. And so you should see it disappear. And now I've plugged the micro tick back in and we are going to see it boot up and we should get an IP address in the 192.168.22 range. And remember, while we're waiting for that to boot, you just remember that we created this as a corporate, which is just a standard LAN, no rules in between. Um, any of the, those VLANs. All right, so our MikroTIC AP has come back online and it should here shortly grab an IP address. Um, if you've worked with Unify, you know, just don't get into a, a big hurry. Don't try to force things and, you know, everything should work out okay. We'll just see what IP this, uh, this grabs. Okay, so it grabbed 192.168.22.39. So watch this. I can ping it. No surprise, because there are no firewall rules in between regular LANs. But, okay, here's one thing we're going to do real quick is we're going to create a group, because some of the things that we're going to do, you're going to have to create groups if you need single IPs, and we'll talk about this, but I'm going to call this uh, micro tick, and I'm going to make this 192.168.22.39, and we're going to leave that at that. We're going to come back, do our sanity check, make sure we can still ping it. We can. So what we're going to do is if we want to block that communication, we're going to create a new rule, and we're going to say block to IoT, and we are going to make it before the predefined rules. We're going to drop it. It's going to be all traffic. And the source is going to be network and it's going to be LAN and the destination is going to be a network and it is going to be IoT. So we just created a firewall rule that blocks all the traffic between these two networks. And you can see now I can't ping. Now, one thing to note here is that just because I have a rule that goes from the LAN source to as the source to IoT as a destination. If I create a firewall rule here to allow ICMP to the mic the micro tick, watch what happens here. So I'll do an accept, and it's going to be before the predefined rules, and we're going to tell it ICMP. And what we're going to do is we're going to say it is going to be from LAN and is going to go to the micro tick. And that's what we're going to allow. So anybody should be able to, to ping that. Now, firewall rule order is very important. So you're going to see this rule fails here, right? The really, reason it fails is because it's rule number 2001, which means it gets processed after rule 2000, which is our uh, block rule there. So we're going to move that up to the top because we're going to allow that ICMP traffic to happen. And now you see that that works. Now, the reason that this works without the third firewall rule is because, um, without a third firewall rule is because what we haven't done is we haven't restricted traffic from the IoT back to the LAN. That's why this ping works successfully. I'm going to go ahead and delete these and I'm going to show you when this wouldn't work so successfully because all those rules would be set up properly. So when you're dealing with the guest network, when you tag a network, as a guest network on Unify, it creates those block rules automatically in and out of a network. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here, we're going to run our sanity check, make sure that we can still ping that with no firewall rules, so that's good. So we're going to come in here to our IoT network, we're going to edit it, and we're going to make this a guest. So what that's going to do is that is going to put the lock down on this network. So you can see we're provisioning. And as soon as we're done provisioning, so it's now applying that default set of firewall rules to the guest network, which is the IoT network. So right now we may still be able to ping that. Yes, because the device is still provisioning. So those rules haven't been completely enforced yet. 
you're going to see here in a minute when the provisioning is done, we should lose the ability to do this ping. Okay, so we are connected. And now you see the ping stops. So we're going to come in and we're going to go into routing and firewall. So for some reason, let's say that you just have to uh, ping this one device. Well, we're going to send you know traffic into this into this guest interface so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new rule and we're going to say allow icmp to the micro tick and it's going to be before it's going to be accept icmp it's going to be from the LAN network and it's going to be to the micro tick now i created this rule and it's going to fail okay so it's provisioned but i still can't ping it because this guest network, any guest network, has a rule that blocks traffic going back out. That's part of this being a guest. So what I need to do is I need to create another rule. And I'm going to call this allow return from microtick. It's going to be a, before predefined rules. We're going to accept. We're going to leave that the way that it is. And we're going to come down here and we're going to say if it's an established connection in or a related connection, we are going to allow it. And we can even go ahead and drill this in and we're going to say from the micro tick uh, back to um, LAN that if it is established or related, we're going to allow it back out. And now you can see that ping works because of this firewall rule. Don't believe me? So watch. I'll come in here. I'll disable this rule. We'll save it. And now we're provisioned. And guess what? That's going to fail all three of those last pings. Because we don't allow that traffic to get back out of the guest network. Come in here, turn this on. And voila. It's not magic. It's firewall rules. Now, you need to remember um, WAN, like I said, I only recommend creating these these any rules that you need on one WAN right now with Unify. And we're really not going to do much with these. We can set up some rules to block things from getting out to the Internet and all that. That's really about the extent of what I'm going to do with WAN rules. LAN rules and guest rules are where you're going to spend most of your time. And you have to remember, every corporate type network is is governed by these these LAN rules. And every guest type network is governed by these rules. And once you remember that and you remember the direction and how things are processed, remember you need to understand that when the firewall looks at these, it's reading starting at the lowest rule index number and reading to the highest number. So they are, you know, read 2000, 2001, 2002, so on and so forth. So that is it. So get your UDM out, get your USG out, and play around with these firewall rules. All right, and that's it for this video. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need that IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks, the link is down below. And as always, all of our affiliate links are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. So if you've got any questions about your Unify firewall rules, make sure that you uh, you reach out. We'll see if we can answer those questions. And uh, as always, I'm Willie. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next video.